the 70s, 80s, and 90s were, uh, they were a different time, and some of the cartoons and kid shows on TV weren't so much for kids as they were a test for parents to see if they were paying attention to what their kids were watching, which they usually weren't. What do I mean? Well, here are but a few examples of children's programming that when it came to the possibility of scarring a young mind for life, these shows just didn't give up. And let me start with what was the predominant children's network from when I was growing up. Nickelodeon. I can think of no better place suited for proof that no showrunners gave a f about my psychological well-being than that channel. The first show I remember watching on Nickelodeon, though, that would be You Can't Do That on Television. And let me tell you something. They should not have done most of that stuff on children's television. Kids eating vomit burgers, kids in front of a firing squad, kids in a torture chamber surrounded by skeletons, kids not being allowed to go to school because they are effectively contracted slaves for the rest of their lives, doomed to be slimed until death. I just, I just want y'all to know this one thing. This show came from Canada, so the next time a Canadian tries to roll up on you and tell you how messed up America is, you remind them that at least part of the responsibility for our flip attitude towards violence and mayhem is on them. But obviously Nickelodeon didn't really reveal the damage they could do until they created Nicktoons, which was their own branding of cartoon shows. Uh, you know, the ones about babies and young teenagers figuring themselves out and Ren and Stimpy. I've seen cartoons like this before. Look, man, I could talk a lot about the show with the asthma hound chihuahua and the cat and the heavily implied sexual relationship, but putting dirty jokes aside that you only really get as an adult, I just want to point out one specific example where Ren and Stimpy spend the night in a haunted house. Look, Ren, this looks like a great place to kill 12 minutes. So the joke is that the ghost can't seem to scare Ren or Stimpy. The ghost gets burned to sausage, which is not kosher. Uh, he gets used as a towel, and his attempts to utilize a bloody head to scare Ren yields a tooth fairy-like creature who gives Ren a couple of dimes to the ear. In short, he's not a very good ghost. So naturally, the ghost decides to commit suicide by slamming a nail through his skull, but man, thank goodness, Stimpy talks him out of it. Are you crazy, man? You can't do that. Here, do this. By telling the ghost to poison himself instead. Suicide, it's a kid's show. Hey, at least the ghost dies and comes back to life as a large naked black man, right? I'm alive. Killer. Who? And related to all Nicktoons, everyone on them is watching porn like half the time. SpongeBob watches porn, Timmy Turner doesn't take a full roll of TP up to his room for no reason, I'll tell you what. Hell, Rocco is a sex phone operator at one point. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Even the grandpa from Rugrats is a sleaze enthusiast. Look, you make one oblique reference on one show, that's fine, no one cares. But Nickelodeon was on a straight up mission to tell kids they ought to check their dad's underwear drawer for nudie mags. But look, you can't blame every deeply disturbed child brain on Nickelodeon. I'm pretty sure He-Man and She-Ra can absorb a lot of that blame too. Like, the crossover, The Secret of the Sword, do you remember this one, where He-Man and She-Ra meet and it's kind of implied that maybe they're into each other, but also that, you know, they're brother and sister. It's like Luke and Leia all over again. Of course, the thing He-Man gave absolutely zero f about was how gay it was. Although, personally, I would call that a good thing. More cartoons should feature men with heart armor riding with other muscly men. Just my opinion. But I will say that if we're talking about muscly cartoon characters in questionable situations, I'm pretty sure Thundercats is a better example. Or at least the pilot episode is. You know, the one where everyone is naked, Chitara's just topless. Ain't no one gonna throw up a sensor bar there? No? This is how furries happen, you know. I'm kidding. That's not how furries happen. Zoobly Zoo and Gadget from Rescue Rangers in her very form-fitting jumpsuit are how furries happen. And furries are fine. You can be a, a furry. No one is saying you can't. Don't at me. But I think we can all still agree that Zoobly Zoo was weird and not something any child or adult 
should be watching. And related to shows for both children and adults, we all love The Simpsons, right? Great show. Definitely gave a f about what they were doing on that show. Definitely aware of who the huge pool of people they were writing for, and they even paid homage to shows that were terrible at writing for kids, like Krusty the Clown, for example. Uh, I could pull a better cartoon out of my ass. <laughs> hey, whoa! Wasn't that great, kids? Everybody loves that character, but he's actually based on a live-action dude named Bozo the Clown, and nobody on Team Bozo the Clown were thinking about the children they were entertaining at all. Not even Bozo himself. I mean, he is positively bored while he's dousing all the boys and girls with nightmare fuel. Oh well. At least we get Krusty out of the deal. And then, there are cartoons that feature real-life people, but animated. There were many seasons of a cartoon featuring Mr. T, for example. It was not an honest show. This little white boy thought he could be like Mr. T. He cannot. This lady silhouette literally turns into Mr. T. That cannot happen in real life, children. And most importantly, despite these instances where it seems like a good idea to get in a bus driven by Mr. T or on a boat driven by Mr. T, and I cannot emphasize this enough, this cartoon does not give a f about your safety, children, and please do not get in a bus and or boat with Mr. T. No one can pay attention to the road and or body of water with that amount of chain dangling around them. Trust me. Do you remember MC Hammer? You do? Well, I know Hammer will be glad to hear that, but what I'm sure he doesn't want you to remember is that time he had a cartoon called Hammer Man, where he has magical shoes that he uses to solve crimes. He was given magical shoes from a hip hop Motown dude. Together they had power. They stood up for what was right. Tragically, the one crime Hammer and his magic shoes could not solve was this cartoon existing in the first place. Now, as has become my understanding thanks to 80 sitcoms, it takes different strokes to rule the world. Yes, it does. But what does it take to unremember the time Gary Coleman had his own cartoon where he's dead and becomes an angel? Now, kids, don't worry. Gary Coleman was not actually killed for this show. I mean, he's dead now, but at the time of the cartoon where he plays like a kid Michael Landon from Highway to Heaven, he was very much alive. Michael Landon is also dead now. So somewhere out there, a crossover show is happening. Too dark? Anyway, now I'd like to end on a little game I like to call Don't Give a F or Gives Too Much of a F. Example one, the Junior Christian Science Bible Lesson Show a show that teaches you about God with spacemen and creepy dolls and creepy people. Are they trying to help kids or destroy them? Who could say? I'm pretty sure perma-nightmares are the only end result though, so... Anyway, example two, Slim Goodbody, where a dude in a leotard covered in muscles and organs and bones teaches kids how to live healthy. Sing along with me. Food is the fuel that'll keep us alive. Food is the fuel that Seems like it would help. The man's hair is obviously on point, but let me be real, my boy looks less like a kid's host and more like a Cenobite. Example three, the new zoo review. I actually never heard of this, but my boss's boss insisted I should go on and add this to the list. Let's find out why together. You see, Fred, it isn't enough to have a mother. To make a baby, you all also need a father. Oh. Absolutely right. The father supplies the sperm that fertilizes the mother's egg. Oh no! And then a baby begins to grow. And it grows, and it grows. It couldn't get any worse. Through all the science and knowledge, it's still a great mystery. I was correct, it just got amazing. Let's all thank Jesse for recommending this example. Truly, the miracle in this case is him. Okay, that's just a scratch of the surface, but obviously, Everyone has different scarring memories of when shows they watched as a kid did not give a f Let us know in the comments or tweet sci-fi with your childhood cartoon trauma or even send us a picture on Instagram of it. We're strong here at Sci-Fi, we can take it. Until next time, I'm gonna go watch some Steven Universe and feel a lot of relief for kids growing up right now. See ya.